This layer of ruffles creates a beautiful evening stole that would be appropriate for a wedding or any special occasion. I've made it here in a cream color. And my measurements for this evening stole are 17 inches by 61 and a half inches, and that's including the ruffle length also. But of course, you could make yours whatever length and width you would like. And it's a very simple pattern. We start out with our chain. Now I began with 300 chains and the pattern's really three. All you need is to have it div divided by three, however long you want to make it. I've already started to work my single crochet in my chain foundation chain and I like to work through the back loop since then you leave a nice clean edge which really helps it to look better even though we are going to put a little finish around the edges of it. So I'm working my single crochets down the row and there would be two rows of single crochet. So you just chain one, turn, and work another row of single crochets all the way down. And this is just the beginning of how your pattern is going to be. It's going to be two rows of single crochet and one ruffle row. Two rows of single crochet and one ruffle row. And then you will end up with two rows of single crochet to complete the pattern and then we'll work around the edge. Now this first row you're going to have your front side the ruffles are always going to be on the front so we have two different stitches we'll be using. There's a front ruffle single crochet and then alternating with the back ruffle and the reason for that is obvious to keep the ruffles on one side. So now we've completed our second row of single crochets. I'm chaining one and turning and for this one we're doing the front ruffle. So I'm going to do two single crochets so we have a little edge and then we begin the front ruffle stitch which we just take the yarn, or the lace in this case, of course you can use something else if you'd like to, and fold it over, usually at least two, but you could use three. So you see the ladders up on top there are where we're going to place our stitches through, and we want a clean edge, we don't want a rough edge. So since it's the front stitch, I place the ruffle in front, go through the ladder, and then just go through the next single crochet stitch, do my yarn over, pull it through both, and do your yarn over and pull it through two. Now I'm having two single crochets in between because um, I wanted a looser, softer ruffle. Sometimes I'll do um, each stitch having a a ruffle in it, but that makes a very thick ruffle. And now we're going through our second, and you just fold over the yarn, come through your second, go through the yarn first, then through your next single crochet stitch, do a yarn over and pull it through, and I'll do a couple more. We do the two plain single crochets, and by this time now I've run out of double, so I'm just working with the single lace, fold it over, place it over your stitch, go through both of them, yarn over, and pull through. So it's very easy to do. Do our, we'll finish off this row. with the two single crochets, fold over for our next stitch, and we're going to end up with two plain single crochets at the end so it matches the beginning of the row.
and I drop my lace yarn to the front. I would do a chain one and turn and here I'm just going back and doing two rows of single crochet. So I would be doing one row that way, turn it over, another row this way. So my third row would need a back ruffle because I'm trying to keep my ruffles on the same side. But I do want a couple rows of plain um, single crochet in between so that the lace will layer. Now if you're using uh, a lace or say the ribbon lace or something that isn't as thick as this is or as wide, you might not want to do uh, two rows. You may only want to do one row. Or if you're using something as much thicker, you may want to add. But you want to keep those rows even. Well, I guess you don't have to because you could do front stitches the whole time. It's The whole point is just to keep the ruffles on one side. So this would be a back ruffle single crochet and you always begin with the chain one and then two single crochets for your edge and now for the back ruffle you just pick up your yarn no matter how many rows down it is and bring that next ladder up to your next stitch and of course this time you're going through your single crochet first put it through the next ruffle and there is a little edge that it leaves there, little ruffle edge, yarn over and complete your single crochet. And I'm still continuing to leave two single crochets in between my ruffle. And then it's the same thing, you put it through here and just pick up your next ladder, put it on, do your yarn over and complete your single crochet. Whoops. And when you get down to the end of the row, you want to make sure that you have your two single crochets to complete that edge. So we'll do one more. Now if this was, say I've, I've finished my project, I've made it as wide as I want it to be. I don't know, let's see, I've done, um, I've repeated it rows 2 through 7 16 times, so mine's pretty wide. You may not want it as wide as that is. But when you get to the end, remember to leave, say, this was my last, my last two stitches. I would want to leave not only the two ladders that go into the last two stitches, but I want to add at least two more by cutting it off, cutting the yarn there, and then I can fold it over and work those last two double because I again want that nice clean edge on the the very edge there. I don't want a raw edge hanging, I want a ruffle. Now to complete the project, let me see, we did that. I'll just finish off this row here. Like I said, if this was the end of my row, I would fold it over, but I'm not going to here. You end off with two single crochet rows, or how many rows you have in the beginning of your project. And then to work the border, because we want to finish off the border, work on the front where all your ruffles are. And we're going to do a slip stitch, working in the back loop only. Let me turn the my chain one and turn everything around here so we get it in the right way. And now I'm going to work, working in my back loop only, I'm going to do a slip stitch all around the edge on my long edge. And when I get to my short edge, I want to do single crochet so I have a finished look on those edges because right now the edges are raw and so I'm doing 
my slip stitch all along. Then when I get to, let me finish there, I'll get to the corner. And when I get to a corner, I want to do three single crochets in my corner so it won't buckle, but it will lie flat. So when I get to my corner stitch, I'm going to do three single crochets in that corner stitch. And I work single crochets all along the raw edge. So I would work single crochets there, do three single crochets in my corner, turn it around, and you still have a nice chain if you had worked through the back chain for the beginning uh, foundation row, and just continue with the slip stitch working in the back loop all along. Three single crochets, single crochets on your raw edge, and end with three single crochets. Now you're going to do one final round, and that round is simply working the slip stitch in the back loop all the way around, and that includes the three corner. You do slip stitch all through, and it gives you a nice, a nice finish then to your project, and it also adds some body to it to help it hold its shape better. That's a little hard to see because it's such a light yarn, but it makes a beautiful ruffled shawl or stole that you can wrap around yourself and hold it with the pin. If you would like to see written instructions, just go to free patterns at simpleandsensational.com and look under the ruffles galore category. This is a collection of various home and accessories that you can make using either fabric yarn, the mesh yarn, lace, ribbon yarn, in short, all sorts of uh, projects you could make for yourself or as beautiful gifts.